mention about uh, what I th how I thought my um, little play test went. So I'll go ahead and just if you go on the channel. Uh, just go ahead and open the channel page and uh, did this three-part series. Um, most of the meat of like my game design and, and that sort of thing, some of the mechanics is in part one. Part two and three is more of just like the battle. I um, think that I went those for I did those for a little too long, but um, that's okay. Uh, so I think the main um, I think overall, if I'm doing a little after action report, so to speak, um, I think my idea of using the action dice as sort of a combination of um, like orders test and then to hit roll, I like, I think that worked pretty well as a proof of concept. Um, my main goal with, with writing the, the, the skirmish rules, uh, which is uh, Kleinkrieg, if you watch this without seeing that, it's for skirmish fighting uh, on the Ottoman Habsburg, well, Venetian as well, but anyway, basically in Ottoman Hungary, which was the main kind of war zone during um, the uh, 16th and 17th century, off and on, kind of low, low-level irregular warfare. Um, and so I've been working on these rules for a little, like, off and on this year. Not, I wouldn't say consistently, but, you know, when, I, when I'm when i sort of motivated to do it. Um, and a lot of it's just a matter of getting uh, motivation to um, do it, but also just, um, just post up some pictures. Uh, a lot of it is just trying to figure out game design um, and trying to tailor things to what I'm trying to do with the rules. Um, and uh, let me uh, make this a little bit bigger. Um, so I want something that's got enough historical grounding, um, but also is quick playing, you know, like a skirmish tends to be in real life, you know, it happens pretty, I think like, you know, like an actual firefight in modern military lasts like, you know, a matter of minutes at the most, I mean, that's that's what I've heard at least anyway, Not a, never serves, so I don't know, uh, never done anything like that, so, um, but anyway, um, just trying to, uh, you know, write something that's quick, but not, um, but but not like so generic that you lose the flavor and so what I wanted to do with that was primarily have that exp what I would like to do for that is have that mostly expressed through the army list so um, make the mechanics of the game the, the basic mechanics of the game pretty easy and, and quick to play but then um, make the um, army the army lists, I mean, not really an army in this, this is really an army sized game, but anyway, just using that as a figure of speech. Um, and then have the, the lists, the troop lists, um, be the, where the historical flavor, uh, historical sort of aspects come in. Um, and so I just wrote up like a really quick, uh, page when I did the the play test the demo game uh, so it was just provincial spahi provincial so for the Ottomans we got provincial cavalry spahi um, so they're just rolling doing their tests on a d6 uh, their elites were janissaries of course uh, and then I also included the Ottoman commander or hero so um, could be like a, a general like an actual pasha or could just be you know, maybe like a local uh, warrior trying to make a name for himself type of thing, or, or go out and capture slaves or something like that, um, or, or, you know, loot, get loot. Uh, 
And so I just, I, really I use that for both um, commanders or heroes, uh, so uh, same profile. Um, so I think when I um, do do that, do the full list, I'm going to have generic ones, but I'll, I'm also going to try and do some research on some uh, historical um, heroes and commanders. I'm going to keep it in the um, 16th century uh, just to mean be consistent um, and even though for the play test I was using 17th century figures but anyway um, that's that was just for that uh, and then we've got uh, for the Ottomans we've got their Sekban or, or basically just their garrison musketeers now I think um, I, I did one thing I, I did make a mistake I think the Sekban, I'll probably change them so their shooting dice are two shots um, instead of the three that um, the Imperialist or the Habsburg Fortress Musketeers get um, just because uh, so, let me back up for a second so um, the Sekban are can skirmish or they can fire in formation, um, so they get a little bit more build, mo, more mobility. Um, but I think to give it a drawback, I'll probably have them if they're skirmishing, they just get two shots. If they but then if they do line up in like a uh, line infantry formation, they'll get three, um, and then that way the Imperialists, even though they have to fire. Uh, they can only fire in formation, uh, no, so no skirmishing. They can do three, uh, th three dice all the time. Um, so they're slower moving, but they have more shots essentially. Um, I, I, I think that'll probably work. Um, and then f for the Imperialists, so we've got their Fortress Musketeers. Uh, we've got Reiter. Uh, and then I had their elites be some Spanish pikemen, so what I might do is add um, some elite, so the Fortress Musketeers will be the basics, but then what I'll do, I think what I'll do is have um, a uh, Spanish Musketeer unit that gets a bonus if they're with um, some, attached to some pikemen, because, you know, this isn't really a scale of game where you're going to have um, full-blown tercios, but I think maybe just to give it that kind of, you know, because even if you're dealing with low numbers, they probably still would have generally followed that tactic of, you know, fading into the, the pikemen, so the pikemen could um, fight in close quarters um, or, or resist cavalry charges. Um, and then another thing uh, that uh, Triarius Wargaming brought up in a comment is making the cavalry, the Ottoman cavalry in particular, um, less likely to charge. So what I think I'll do is, um, if cavalry charges pikemen, they're going to have to do, they're going to have to test for combat on a, um, I think maybe on a six or. Um, maybe like at a minus two. Uh, now what I did do and what I think I will keep is a pikeman get a plus two to piercing against um, cavalry. So you um, so each unit is wounded on a different value. Um, so like if they're so like if, if pike do go up against cavalry because I, I put you know any mounted troop is wounded on a five um, then I think I'll do then that means if pike char are fighting cavalry they will um, they'll uh, get a plus two so basically just they're gonna wound cavalry on, on a roll on a three or better essentially um, I think that's that seems to be a good trade-off um, because that's something I, uh, you know, I think is important when you're writing games like this. Not that I've done it a ton, but you know, I think if you have an a unit with an advantage, there needs to be a trade-off. And I know lately on YouTube, at least the fashionable 
thing to say is, well, you just can't balance war games, and I, I really just don't agree with that. Um, and um, without getting into that too much, I mean, it's one thing to say, okay, in historical, in military history, you have asymmetrically sort of imbalanced scenarios. That's true. Um, but, you know, in a lot of cases, that doesn't necessarily mean the numerically you know, outnumbered foe or maybe even outgunned in a, in a pure, you know, technical sense is, is going to lose necessarily. Um, and, and at the end of the day, I mean, these are games and they're designed to be fun. And I, and I just don't see the point in, in make writing games that have no competition. I mean, that's just, unless you're really trying to do a, you know, historical simulation um, you know, you're not going to, you know, there's no sense in making these things totally uncompetitive. Um, so anyway, with that digression, uh, so I, right now, just have a basic, uh, list, um, hang on, let me, all right, just check, taking a look at how long this has been going, and if anybody else is tuned in, um, Anyway, uh, so I think, and then another thing about the lists uh, that I that I will say I I, I just took from Kings of War because I I think it's really great. Um, it's having you know instead of like a points or even like a force organization chart. I mean, it's sort of a force organization chart, but having to um, unlock units. So you have to. So in Kings of War. Um, if you don't know, and you're just listening to this, the way it works is you don't have, like in a, just, you know, Warhammer 40k, where in the old rules you had, you know, okay, you gotta take, um, you know, one HQ and two troops, and then that's like your minimum, but then you can kind of take, you know, whatever you want, um, from the other slots, um, as long as you're in your point value for the game, um, but Kings of War does it a little differently, so... You can you can take so your base unit is a regiment, and then for every regiment you have, that gives you um, additional choices. So, um, like if you have one regiment, you can I think you can have like up to two um, troop sized units, which is like ten you know ten men or something. And like one war machine, and like one um, monstrous creature, or something like that. Um, but but I think what that does is that really emphasizes that okay, you can have the special units, but you know your core, your army is really built around just the the grunt, you know, line troops. Um, I, I think that's a good system, and I and I think I'd probably want to do this. I wanted to do that because I didn't want the lists like or the forces in in this game to to keep some sort of historical detail. Um, I didn't want it to be like, well, okay, if you're the Ottomans, you can just take a bunch of Janissaries and you know, and then you'll just roll, you know, D8s every time and and you know, not, and um, you know, just blast through the the enemy. Or, you know, same thing if you're playing Imperialists and you take a bunch of Spanish pikemen and Spanish musketeers, you know, you're, um, it, that way there's a little more um, competitiveness. Plus, um, it, 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 it does sort of fit the history because, um, you know, each fortress garrison did have some Janissaries. Um, and, but, um, you know, the, the, the bulk of the fighting was done by just locals that they hired, um, in Hungary, so, uh, just to keep it, you know, kind of mix it up and, and make sure that, you know, you won't show up with a bunch of, like, elite troops, and, you know, and then you're just gonna, um, you know, just totally destroy your opponent. I mean, granted, this would probably be a game played by friends and stuff, so I, I don't think, I would hope that wouldn't happen, but, um, just, just to keep it a little more interesting, I think, and then also make it so you have to be a little more, um, like, uh, conscious about what units you pick and, and that sort of thing. 
Um, and then another aspect to the um, list that I think I, uh, the list I think I want to bring into the game, but I haven't fully thought out yet. Um, and I guess I'll kind of think out loud right now is um, having like a uh, so instead of like maybe points have each unit is worth a certain number of ducats um, and uh, it, just because that would fit the theme more because a lot in this region both sides um, a lot of there was a lot of um, well not just slavery um, but uh, ransoming going on so you know you would both the you know it was uh, it was a pretty significant excuse me um, trade of having um ransom, you know, you'd ransom, try and ransom nobles, try and, you know, um, and that sort of thing to uh, make money. Um, so I think what I might do for that, because I do want to implement some kind of capturing mechanic, um, is, you know, each unit is worth like a certain, like I said, a certain number of ducats, um, and I probably wouldn't make it like huge numbers just to make, make it so the math was easy. So like, um, your, like, okay, let's just say, you know, your, your, um, uh, Austrian or, you know, he could be a Hungarian, like Lord is worth 15 ducats. Um, if, if you, if he's killed in action, and, you know, presumably him and his, and he's looted, but then, you know, you have, like, but then if you capture him, he's worth, like, double, just to some, you know, just to, like, oh, you, you know, you've, you've captured him as, as the Turks, and you've ran, and you, you know, you're trying to ransom him, basically, um, just as, like, another element of, of keeping score, um, and then I think that would also feed into the, um, having, like, some sort of, like, campaign type of thing, so, um, you know, kind of like, uh, Necromunda or Mordheim or even, um, Pikeman's Lament has it where, you know, you build your, your hero or your officer has, like, certain traits, and there's, like, some light sort of RPG elements to it, um, and, and experience points, but I, I think for this, I just focus on having, like, you know, okay, you win game one as, let's say, you win game one as the Imperialists and you have destroyed or or captured, like, you know, 100 ducats of units in total. Um, you know, you can maybe, you know, upgrade one of your units to something or give your lord, um, you know, an improved weapon. I The one thing, though, that that's kind of... I'm not... I, I don't, I don't want to do it where it's kind of like... Um, Necromunda, which is, and, and, and this is the reason why I don't play Necromunda, actually, is just because you have to, um, just do all this, like, bookkeeping for, like, each individual, um, unit, and I, that just doesn't appeal to me in Wargaming, um, I, I get why people like it, but it's just not for me, um, so I think something like Pikeman's Lament, where you have, you know, like, your hero can maybe get you know, some upgrades or some advantages, um, in the, in the context of, like, a campaign, but, um, you know, not, like, crazy, like, each, you know, guy on each unit has, like, whatever weapon or, you know, improved this or that, um, it's also why I don't really like the, um, Warhammer, the current Warhammer 40,000 Crusade rules, just because every time I've done a Crusade list, it's just so much, I gotta fill out a page, basically, for every single unit, and then, and keep track of all that stuff, and just not really interested in that in war games. It's uh, uh, too much like a role playing game for me, and um, you know, I mean, I I, I enjoy I, you know I enjoy role playing games uh, sometimes, but it's not my first choice, and and um, it's just always after playing one for a little while, actually, not just like reading the books. Um, just the uh, the amount of like detail is, is just not something that overly appeals to me. But anyway, that's a digression. Um, so some kind of you know the point is some kind of like um, 
point or you know money system for um, you know playing like a multi-game kind of campaign. Um, I would like to bring that into it, but I, but that's kind of getting ahead of myself. I think what I really need to do is get the initiative system worked out a little bit better um, and get some more army list entries. So um, right now I'm, I'm just focusing on the um, imperialists and uh, the, the Ottomans, obviously, because that's sort of my wheelhouse, but um, the Venetians were also on the frontier as well um and there are also uh these guys which i have pictured are the um uskoks which were uh pirates um i'm not sure why they're carrying a hungarian flag i'm not i, I just don't know what the context of this painting is um anyway um this might not be an Us... This, this probably is... Actually, no, I don't think this is Uskok related. Uh, my mistake. Anyway. Um, but, uh, yeah, so there was the... I'm reading a book on it right now, actually. It's called... It's just called the Uskoks of Senj, which is in Croatia. Um, so they were basically pirates that resisted the Turks. Um, but they also... They were... They were kind of a free agent in a way. Uh, they didn't... You know, they, they, uh, they did submit to Habsburg rule, um, but they also kind of messed with the um, Venetians in the region as well. Um, so these are some reenactors in uh, Croatia, modern Senj. That's the fortress. Um, yeah, pretty cool clothing. Oh, that's a, that's a great engraving. Um, by Cesare Vicelia. I'm gonna have to take a look at this. Oh, this is pretty cool. This is, must be from the same book. Got a musketeer. Armored. Looks like an armored pikeman. What's this supposed to be? Oh, okay. So, Kandia. This was the fortress in. The I think it was in Dalmatia, yeah. Huh. So he's got a bow. That's interesting. Um, which actually reminds me, I do have um, a um, I, I do have provisions for bows in there because the Ottomans used a lot of bows even into like the 17th century. Um, and obviously, if this picture is um, accurate I guess the must be Venetian uh, had must have had archers as well um, what is this this looks like maybe a pikeman or a oh, musician I guess okay well I thought that was a pike according to this that's what it says um, Anyway, um, so I want to work like the Uskoks in as well as another playable force, and then um, probably the Venetians as well, and uh, and then I think that would give enough. Uh, I wouldn't want the list to be too long or or too extensive because this is still fundamentally like focusing on skirmishes, so um, I think that would be. I think it would be best to um, not, you know, not have like these huge lists. Um, I think depending on how it goes, probably have three or four basic um, units. That's both infantry and cavalry, and then maybe like two elite units per list type of thing. Um, that's just an estimation, but. Uh, yeah, I think that would that might um, work. And then the other thing I wanted to look at was just different um, ways of doing initiatives. So as I had it in the video, it was a roll-off of um, 
player A nominates a unit, player B nominates a unit, and you roll off. But, I mean, if you have a situation where you have odd numbers, I wouldn't want to penalize someone for uh, taking for, for taking more or someone for taking less and, and then just giving their opponent free moves. Um, so I'm going to have to find a way to deal with that a little, a little more elegantly instead of just having it be a roll-off. Um, but I do like the idea of having just... Um, where I what I'm trying to avoid is where the one player feels like they're just like sitting there while the other opponent moves. So I feel like I, I want something where you feel like every round or every yeah every round basically you have a chance to do something. Um, so I don't know how I'm gonna achieve that. And uh, there's been some people left some suggestions in the comments so. Uh, could do an order system like bolt action. That's a little too randomized for me, though, as much as I enjoy bolt action. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, and then I could just do regular orders tests. Um, that might work as well uh, for each unit. And then that way, you know, there's a chance player A can fail some, player B can fail some, um, so that might be another thing, but I, but I, but what I might do, just to emphasize the fact that this is, you know, small war bands being led by, you know, like some kind of dynamic hero type character, um, maybe the, it's just the, the, um, the hero, you know, rolls on his action dice or something, not fully sure yet, um, so that, that'll be something else to think about. Um, hmm. This is a little off topic, but this is 1590, and it's still got, you still have armored, fully armored, I guess like swordsmen or men at arms. That's interesting. Unless he's supposed to be like an armored pikeman, or maybe a dis, like he's a crossier that's dismounted. Anyway, um, okay, <laughs> yeah, if you watch this later, you can see that, uh, how long we've been going, about half hour, well, about 20 minutes, um, all right, um, uh, I was looking at that before the stream kind of started. Fantasy. Just taking a look at some assault group stuff to see what... I think... See, these rules I want to write would be good for stuff like this, like Albanian Stratiots with sidearms, like something that doesn't necessarily have like a... a uh, you know, an official designation like other rules, but you know, you could take these guys and use them as sort of generic, like Southeastern European warriors at this period of time. Um, and, uh, Crow, let's take a look at the... Excuse me. Cross the swords. Um, yeah, same thing with these guys. Um, even though, I mean, you could use them as Hungarian hussars or something. Um, That's another thing. I might want to make like a like a Hungarian Transylvanian list as well. Um, I think I could probably do that if I as if I do more research. Just because um, you know each list isn't going to be like huge. It's going to probably be like five six units tops. Um, and then that way, I want to do that just so like it's not too many units, but then if you want to do, like, all cavalry or something, um, to try that out, uh, different types of cavalry, you know, maybe, like, you got some mounted arquebusiers for firepower, you got some crossier for close in, and then, like, um, you know, some hussars for, like, a quick light cavalry, I don't know, something where you could play around with it, 
um, Hungarian light horse with bows. Yeah, I definitely do want the archers to be something that you would actually want to play with because that's why I added the um, you know one turn to reload just to emphasize like the um, like the sort of like the what the simulated pace of the game is supposed to be but then also so that like there's an actual drawback to taking a bunch of musketeers or, or cavalry with um, with pistols or something um, where you know like and I think maybe with the cavalry with pistols maybe like heroes could get as many shots as they wanted but you know if you've got like a regiment of um, writer for example you know maybe they have like two pistols max so they get two shots and then you just have to and then they just have to fight with their swords after that something like that and then that way you know there's an incentive to play with like um, cavalry with bows because you know these guys would not be limited to a number of shots you know they you just be assumed they have more than enough arrows to fight and you know it doesn't doesn't take the same amount of time to, um, uh, you know, to reload a, a bow, um, obviously, compared to a black powder weapon. Um, let's see. Speaking of which, I, I think maybe next Ottoman, we've got some raid Ockinger Raiders, Delhi with bows. I forget what the Delhi, like the official designation was for that. I have to look into that again. But anyway, yeah, I think I maybe would like to get some of these, some of these archer, Ottoman ar horse archers that aren't Tatars. Oh, I like these too. I wonder where they got the uh, the visual reference for this. I'm, I'd be curious. Um, hmm. Let's see how long we've been going. Uh, all right. Uh, I think I'll wrap this one up. I, this one's uh, nobody really tuned in, so there wasn't as much uh, discussion as I would have liked. Might revisit this topic later on. Um, and anyway, if you're watching this later, which you probably are, um, hope you liked it. Um, just the game design discussion. Uh, if you have any feedback or thoughts, um, let me know. Um, and, uh, and let me go back to the channel page again. Um, and if you... Do, 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 um, let me go back to my videos. Oh no, we don't want to go to YouTube Studio. Um, just want to go to the channel page. Uh, my channel. Yeah, uh, so if you want to see you know, a lot of what I'm talking about, Go, you can watch, uh, part two and part three is more just the battle, and there's a few little rules things that come up, but part one I, I is short, the shortest part as well. Um, I just give like an overview, and, and that's just a demo of the first turn, so you can see how, um, you know, it kind of works. Now I will say, you know, there's some, there's there are some inconsistencies during the game, just because I was kind of making things up as I was going along in some cases, um, but that's, I think that's all part of playtesting. Um, and then that's the main project at the moment. Um, I kind of do want to buy some Kings of War stuff, but the Postal Service is being pretty crazy right now. And I did want to kind of get do some stuff with that, but I also don't know if I'll be able to paint a lot. Um in time because I'm moving at the end of the month 
so I'm gonna have to figure out what you know what I can feasibly get done yeah what I can feasibly sort of get done um, in the next couple weeks so uh, we'll see how it goes um, you know if I uh, get anything new and do any sort of new assembling and projects you guys will be the first to know I do have I did I have made a little bit of a dent in the paint pile um, so I'll probably show that on the channel soon um, lately I've been, I was today I was working on um, a uh, Warhammer Fantasy Age of Sigmar Dwarf Gyre Bomber <laughs> excuse me and I did a uh, dwarf um, dwarf um, uh, Cogs, Cogsmith, yeah, that's what it is, and I gotta do the Warden King too, so I'll probably do a little hobby video about them soon, um, and then I've got another Ottoman uh, Commander that I, I want to get painted up, that I, uh, a Salt Group miniature, I think, um, yeah, and I, I bought them like months and months ago, just didn't get them done yet, um, so do that probably soon as well. Uh, anyway, this has been kind of long, so I'll wrap it up here. Uh, thanks for watching, um, and uh, I'll probably do another one of these soon. Um, I think probably be better to do these on the weekend, I think, because I know Monday night's kind of a weird time, but I just wanted to do this. So, um, yeah, uh, thanks for watching, everyone, um, and I will talk to you all in the next video.